Hello, uh, so I'm going to be talking about how I fell in love with interlocking puzzles and with 3D printing and discovered uh, that the two go together quite nicely. Um, so this is Gathering for Gardener. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with interlocking puzzles. Uh, my own interest began around six years ago, uh, shortly after the 2016 gathering, and I became passionately interested in interlocking puzzles, and in particular, uh, the striking geometric designs of Stuart Coffin. But I quickly ran into a problem that I think most novice puzzle collectors are familiar with, which is that uh, while there's thousands upon thousands of puzzle designs that have been invented, and many of them published with detailed specifications, uh, at any given point in time, only a handful are commercially available. So if you're interested in a particular puzzle, and it happens not to be available at that time, traditionally your only recourse, either you need woodworking skills, of which I have essentially none, uh, or you can go to puzzle auctions where prices can run quite high. Uh, so shortly after this, I also became interested in 3D printing. And one of the first things I tried to do was print puzzles. And uh, here's an early prototype. Um, it's, it's not exactly a thing of beauty, but I was surprised. Uh, it was accurate. It was functional um, to a surprising degree. And it motivated me to, to keep experimenting and, and trying to print more puzzle designs. Uh, and I soon ran into a major challenge, which is this. Um, so half hour, uh, this is a Stuart Coffin design, uh, has a very nice property that all of the pieces can lay flat in such a way that no part of them overhangs empty space. Um, this is somewhat unusual. Most puzzle designs are more like Coffin's Quartet, another Stuart Coffin design, where you can see piece B has that property. But for pieces A, C, and D, it turns out no matter how you rotate them, some part is going to overhang empty space. Uh, and so home 3D printers operate by depositing layers of filament from the print bed on up. And so if you have pieces that overhang empty space, it turns out um, there's no good way to print those pieces accurately enough for interlocking puzzle purposes. And so to get around this, I turned to an idea originally due to Richard Gain, uh, another puzzle enthusiast that I call snap joints. And so to print a piece like this with uh, an overhanging part, we print it in two components with a jointed connector. And then after printing, snap them together. Uh, and I sometimes like to reinforce with a drop of super glue. Uh, and that actually makes a, a very solid and accurate piece. And uh, you can get beautiful constructions like this. This is another Stuart Coffin puzzle where some of the pieces are in different colors. And so you can get very complex, multicolored pieces uh, and, and this way, um, you know, you can print a, a wide variety of puzzles. Uh, and so as I printed more and more of these puzzles, uh, I realized I was doing essentially the same set of modeling operations over and over again. And I thought it would be a good idea to automate this process. And so I turned to OpenSCAD, which is a popular uh, programming-based CAD modeling software. And within OpenSCAD, I built an open source library that I call PuzzleCAD. Uh, which is a, an open SCAD library for interlocking puzzles. And it enables you to write code that looks like this. And so here there's two sections to the code. Um, the top section specifies the puzzle parameters, the size of the puzzle, the tolerances, various aesthetic properties. And then the bottom section is the structure of the puzzle, in this case, uh, Coffin's Quartet. Run this through PuzzleCAD, and it spits out a model like this. Uh, and so. Uh, it becomes relatively easy to model essentially any rectilinear puzzle. Uh, here's some nice examples. Um, extending these ideas, we can model nice non-rectilinear designs, uh, such as the geometric designs of Coffin. Um, puzzle sets. Here's a very large puzzle set. Uh, these are some tray packing puzzles of Stewart's. Um, these are some beautiful puzzle cubes by uh, Alphonse Eichmanns, a Belgian designer. Uh, and I, again, I was surprised how accurate and, and functional I was able to get them. Uh, uh, one of, I think, uh, Stuart Coffin's most striking designs. And, uh, and then I thought, uh, so one of the goals of this was to make it, you know, lower the barrier to entry for uh, puzzle collecting. And I thought, OK, it would be a good idea to share these designs. And so with, with help from a number of others and with the generous support of the puzzle designers, uh, I created the Printable Puzzle Project, um, which is now available at puzzlehub.org. Uh, most of the designs that I have presented in this talk are on uh, Puzzle Hub. So if you have a, a 3D printer at home, 
you can go to puzzlehub.org and you can download uh, these, these designs and print copies for yourself. Um, and then uh, uh, at today's offsite, uh, I'll have a puzzle booth with many of these puzzles on display. And so if you want to see what they look like close up and come play around with them, um, stop by the puzzle booth this afternoon. Uh, and then at the, uh, uh, at the end of the afternoon, I'll be raffling off copies of a number of them. So um, that's all I have to say. Thank you.